Hi, my name is Jan Daniel Lancaster, and I'm superintendent of Catholic Schools for the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Our Schools, Our Future. We have an exciting show planned. Tonight, we will meet two students in the Archdiocese who received the honor of being Student of the Year. We also have Carol Elliott, one of our associate superintendents from the Office of Catholic Schools. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank WLAE for giving us this opportunity to share with you the good news in Catholic education. We'll be right back. The 2013 WLAE Tuition Auction, Sunday, March 24th, beginning at 4 o'clock p.m., only on LAE, more than television. Never forget our best teachers, the ones who do so much more than teach. They inspire and insist we bring our best in everything we do. We find those mentors in our Catholic schools. It's why Catholic school graduates consistently go on to college, land better jobs, embrace faith, and lead. Louisiana Catholic Schools, in a class of their own. Welcome back to Our Schools, Our Future. Tonight, I have Carol Elliott with us, and Carol is the Associate Superintendent in the Catholic Schools Office. And Carol, we really appreciate you being with us tonight. Thanks, Jan, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, this year, I think, has just been um, a wonderful year for the Office of Catholic Schools, and we'll talk about that. But before we get to that, I just wanna comment to you that when it comes to servant leadership, I just see you as everything a servant leader should be. I've known you for many years. It's obvious that Catholic education truly is your ministry. And I would like for you to share with the audience just what you have done as far as Catholic education. Thanks, Jan. Well, I, I thought about it last night and I came to the conclusion that I've been in Catholic education for 47 years. Now you're not that years. old. You're not that old. Thanks, Jan, so. 47 <laughs> years. I was a student, of course. I was a teacher, I was an administrator, and now this is my eighth year as an associate superintendent in the Office of Catholic Schools. And I am truly on fire about Catholic education. It is my life, I've spent 80% of it in Catholic schools. Well, you know, as an associate superintendent, you are doing a phenomenal job this year, but I also want to say from a personal experience, when I was a principal right after Katrina, you were my associate superintendent. Right. You were there for us. You helped us so much as we brought uh, some of the schools back after Katrina to open them. And, and I, I can honestly say, we had your home number, your cell number, <laughs> and we could reach you, and you were always there when we needed something. So I thank you for that as a principal. And the principals with which you work today, I know also feel the same way. Can you tell us a little bit about your role in the Office of Catholic Schools? Absolutely. Of course, as you said, um, we are servant leaders in the office, and this year we have a fantastic team of experts who go out into the schools, who give their, their um, craft knowledge to the principals to help them, because as you know, being a principal is a very challenging but most rewarding vocation, and we are there to serve them. And my role in the office this year is to be the liaison between the principals and our office. I am there any time of the day or night to listen to them and listen to them and listen to them and offer my words of wisdom, not as a dictate or a mandate, but as inspiration and encouragement. And it, uh, it truly makes me feel that I am doing God's work and that I am truly a servant leader to them. I really, you know, and when I was looking at the restructuring of our office, and as you said, this year we've gone to a different structure we, we, where we have people in areas of expertise. Right. And I know, as I said earlier, from having you as an associate superintendent and you working as the elementary associate superintendent, those principals have such a resource in you. As you said, you make it obvious to them that you want to serve, you want to help, and you want to listen. 
So, so you're doing that, and, and I just feel like it's going so well. I think our whole office is just um, going out into the community and, and showing people that we want to do whatever we can do to help make their Catholic schools the best possible school that each Catholic school can be. I certainly agree. We are a team. We continue to look for new and, and new incentives and in, in, um, just try to inspire and instill a good Catholic education in all that we work with. I want to ask you, as you look back on your years in Catholic education, and as I said, I can't believe <laughs> 40, I, that's unbelievable, and I'm sure people out there are thinking the same thing. Thanks. But as you look over all of your years, what would you say is the most rewarding uh, part about your, your Catholic ministry and vocation? I think touching hearts and bringing Christ to the students and the students to Christ. And I think that that has brought me to where I am today. And I think we need to continue to do that. And Catholic schools are doing that as we speak. And you know, as I go through the Catholic schools, and I, I know you feel the same way, I see people treating children in a most sacred way. And, and I feel that's what makes our schools um, different is that we truly treat every child in a most sacred way. I agree. And our schools are embedded in service and making the world a, making the world a better place and instilling our Catholic values in others. So I, I feel so honored and privileged to work in the Ministry of Catholic Education. I did owe that, Jan. I want to bring up also, uh, besides being the associate in the liaison for elementary schools, you also have worked on Student of the Year for many years. And later in the show, we are going to be meeting two of our student of the, uh, two students that have, re have been recipients of Student of the Year from the Archdiocese of New Orleans. So I wanted you to tell us a little bit about that program and, and what you have done each year and, and just what that means. The Student of the Year program is a program sponsored by the State Department of Education as well as the Bessie Board. And what it does is it allows schools, any school that's state approved, to participate. And what it does is recognizes outstanding 5th, 8th, and 12th grade students, whether in the public school or the non-public school. And the Archdiocese hosts the local level of the non-public division. And then these students, once chosen, go on to the regional division. And then from regional, if they qualify, they go to the state uh, state contest, and that is in April. Well, that's wonderful. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the criteria and yes. what you're looking for as yes. you're judging the students? Because competition's tough. Oh, very tough. I, would, I think every student who is sent from their uh, school, from the local level, uh, probably is uh, tops would, would probably be the, the candidate for the state. However, as you know, we can only pick one, one from the fifth, one from the eighth, and one student from the 12th grade. We look at academics, we look at leadership skills, and we also look at citizenship and their service to the community. And I understand that this evening we have two of our uh, candidates who placed from the Archdiocese, and they will be with us this evening to tell us a little bit about themselves. And I've met them a little bit outside before we came on, and I tell you what, they both seem like they are just, they're, they're adorable. They are. And they I, really are. I'm excited about having them on the show. You know, Carol, it's almost time for us to end this segment, but I want to thank you for being here, and, and I want to thank you for everything you do for the Ministry of Catholic Education, and in particularly in the Office of Catholic Schools. Thank you, Jan, for giving me that opportunity. And we will be right back with our winners for Student of the Year. It's happening in schools and schoolyards. A timeless tradition is rekindled with every new class in every new faith. In Louisiana Catholic Schools, learning goes beyond textbooks and testing. Students are embracing faith, values, leadership skills, and of course, a classic history of academic excellence. Invest in success. Louisiana Catholic Schools, 
a class of their own. We have with us tonight Annalise Ernst and Alice Barnes' father. Did I get Bain's father? <laughs> right, I was correct. close. I was close. Bain's father from Ursuline Academy. And Annalise has won the Student of the Year Award for eighth grade. Yes. <laughs> and like I said, are you all from Ursuline? And I'm very proud of that because I am an Ursuline alum. So I have a very important question for you. Skip Mac or Sue? I'm a Sue. All right. Those of us from Ursula know exactly what that means. So, uh, but I'm glad you're a Sue. I was a Sue too. Sue is 78. But congratulations. This, this is a phenomenal honor. Thank we you. Have, it's, it, the competition is tough, and you got it. So congratulations. I wanted to ask you um, one of the, the one of the components that really is is looked at is the the service that that maybe you've done in the volunteering that you've done in the community to make the world a better place could you tell us a little bit about what you have done in the community as far as volunteering and then making the world a better place <laughs> um, well like ever since I've been in Ursuline since kindergarten um, we've service has always been a really big part of what I've learned I've grown up you know serving on it's really important to me so I've like learn to appreciate service in my life. It's not just something extra, like I have to learn how to incorporate it, like it's part of what I do. So um, like for school we have to do service and um, we go to different places. Like this year we're working with elderly, so um, we, my class, we volunteer at Covenant Home and so and previous to that, um, I volunteered at Ch Chateau de Notre Dame and really worked with elderly people and really enjoyed it. And I've done other things too, like I worked at a spine camp for kids with spina bifida and helped them. You know, we went swimming and did tons of stuff, which was really fun. And it really like it really opens your eyes to like, you know, how helping other people really it helps like make m you a better person. So. I remember that. My years at Ursuline, and I think you all still do this, St. Angela's Feast Day, January 27th, you go out in the community and do service projects. Mm -hmm. Have you done that? Uh, yes, yeah, so recently we just did it. Um, recently, of course. Um, we went to um, City Park and we helped, like, we mulched the trails and the and raked and helped clean City Park, which was really fun. I mean, it's hard labor, but... Well, what I like about that day is every, every class goes out in the community. And so you're all over the community doing service projects. Then you come back at the end of the day and talk about what you did to make the world a better place. And I think you're exactly right when you say that Ursuline through Serviam, I will serve, it, it makes service a part of your life. Not something that you do extra, but, but truly a part of your life. And, and I think through doing that, it instills lifelong, um, being a lifelong Catholic and the importance of, of living your faith. Now, as you get older, um, how, how do you think you will serve others? You thought about that in any um, way? I guess I have. Well, I mean, I don't really know. I don't think I would ever stop serving others because just, you know, it's really part of like being Catholic and going to Ursuline. Um, I think I could, when I have a family, I would help my kids, like, you know, realize that service is really important and, um, like, maybe go and do service, like, outside of, you know, normal, like, to have special time to go and do service. And that, that's so very important, so I thank you for those comments. Uh, now, let me ask you, another component of, of this, when they look at the, the criteria and look at the different portfolios, the strong academics. So in order to get this award, I know that you do very well academically. Could you tell us what is your favorite subject? Um, my favorite subject is English. Um, I like English. I'm more of an Englishy person than <laughs> math. 
Um, I like how, you know, with math, it's just like, you know, like one answer, you know, you have to work to solve that problem. But English, there's so many different, like, perspectives and, like, way to look at things than not math, you know, it's just there. And I don't know, I like reading, so it helps with English and stuff, so, yeah. Well, I taught English, <laughs> fifth grade English, and I, and I know what you mean. We could do all kind of creative things, yeah. and it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun uh, uh, teaching English and, and seeing, working with, with the students. So, yeah, I'm, I'm right. I tell you what, Sue, you like English? <laughs> all kind of things we just agree on, so that's great. That's great. And Alice, uh, I know there's big news for you next year. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, uh, I will be the principal for the 2013-14 school year at Ursuline Academy. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to continuing the big movements that we have made um, this year and in the past few years since I have been there with respect to curriculum, but also with respect to serviam and, and things. So I'm looking forward to it. It's and very you're going to be principal of the high school. Yes, ma'am. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. And you were actually part of the high school in yeah. eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So it's the 8th from 12th. Now, could you tell me also, what do you love about Ursuline? One thing, what is a memory that all years of Ursuline, funny memory, great memory, would take with you for years to come? What do you think? Um, I would have to say I love how Ursuline is such a like, close school and small. So unlike other schools, you know, no, I, I, other schools are good, but I like how Ursuline's really small because like you really feel like you get to know everyone and you feel like a big family because you're so close and ever since I've been there my classes have been really small so I've known you know everyone in my class and gotten really close with not just people like in my class but people throughout the whole school and it like when we have assemblies and when we have mass and everything you feel like you're a part of something important like you're part of like Ursuline tradition which is really really great so I, and you know when you meet someone from Ursuline throughout your life the first question always is will you a skip back <laughs> yeah. and and that's just so neat and I've, I've enjoyed that as an alum of Ursuline and our, our class still keeps in touch mm. so uh, you're making lifelong friends and Ursuline will ha just have a lifelong impact on you as I think all of our Catholic schools do, yes, I do. Uh, as I talk to students from Catholic schools you really do see that we are, are showing cho cho showing young adults how to live their faith. Right. Um, and, and Alice, we're getting ready to end uh, this segment, but what would you like to leave us as far as what do you love best about Ursuline? Well, I'd have to agree with Annalise. I think um, that Ursuline has the same programs as a lot of other schools, but we really are community, family-based. And I think it's, you know, when you walk on a campus, it's not unusual to see an eighth grader talking to a 12th grader or a ninth grader talking to a faculty member that they don't have. And I think that that's something very special that Ursuline offers, is the fact that we all know each other, one another, and it's not just about Max Skipper Sue. However, that's very important. <laughs> I do understand that. But you know that they do know one another, and it is one big family. and. The concern and stuff, and the, the 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 leadership that the kids pull through that, because being a small school, it does allow them to excel in multiple things. Because we need each and every one of them to be members of our activities and stuff. Well, if I could take my one thing from Ursuline, it would be the same as what you all said: the smallness and the way it taught me to live a life of service embedded in my Catholic faith. Well, I thank you both for being here. Thank congratulations you. to you, you on this award, and congratulations to you on your new position. Thank you so much. And we will be right back. What will the world ask of them? Whatever it is, they'll be prepared to answer. Because in a safe and disciplined environment, Louisiana Catholic schools shape tomorrow's leaders. Catholic students are rising. 99% graduate. Almost all go to college. They'll earn higher wages, be community involved, more tolerant of diverse views. And the world will be better because of them. 
Louisiana Catholic Schools in a class of their own. Welcome back. Today we have with us Mary Brett Brown and Marguerite Celestin from SSA. Mary Brent received the Student of the Year Award for 12th grade. Mary Brent, thank you so much for being with us today. Yes, thank you for having me. Well, it's an honor and a privilege, and I know, Marguerite, you're just so proud. We are very proud of Mary Brent and all that she has accomplished during her five years at SSA. It's been remarkable. Well, that's great. What do you think are some great characteristics of Mary Brent? First of all, she's very outgoing, she is very selfless, and she's always looking for what she can do to help the other person. And th she has shown that as, as uh, I'm sure came out in the interview, in, in many of the uh, things that she does in, out in the community, and not only for the community, but also to help young women of all ages and help them to grow into someone who will give back to the community. Well, Mary Brett, could you tell us a little bit about that? What, um, what areas of service do you enjoy doing? Could you sure. tell us about that a little bit? Well, my favorite service activity is probably Kids Want to Help, which is a nonprofit that I started when I was in seventh grade. I started oh, with my wow. younger sister, Beverly, and so far we've raised about $115,000 for national and international nonprofits. Oh, and how do you decide where that money is going to go? Well, we have a fashion show in the fall, and all of that money goes to the JL Foundation, which is a cause for leukemia patients. And then in the spring, we have the Lemonade Brigade, where we teach kids how to become business owners, and then those kids choose where they want their money to go. You know, that, that's really making the world a better place, and, and that's phenomenal. How did you get that idea in seventh grade? Well, my sister Beverly and I, we wanted to give kids a way to make a meaningful impact in their community, and so we started Kids Want to Help so that kids could make their own fundraising decisions. Oh, wow. And tell me about your time at, at, at SSA. Uh, you're a senior this year. I am. So this is your last year. And I remember my senior year it was somewhat sad because I just yes. uh, had grown up so much at, at Ursuline where I went to high school. So tell me about your high school years, some, some favorite memories, um, what, what you're going to take with you from being at SSA for those four years. Well, I really loved going to SSA. I think it's wonderful that it's an all-girls school because I've really been able to grow with my classmates as sisters, and I'll be really sad to leave this year and go on to college um, because I will miss all of my friends and classmates, but I've had a wonderful time there, and so I'm glad that I was able to have that time. You know, and as you go through your life and look back on SSA, I would like to ask you, how do you think SSA helped instilled your faith? Uh, well, we have wonderful religion classes, and so we have teachers that are really passionate about sharing their faith with us and about helping us grow, and so that's been really instrumental for me. And also, when we look at the student of the year, besides the service, which is everything we are and it's who we are as, as a Catholic church, making the world a better place, but also we look at the very strong academics. Yes. And I understand that you do very well academically in school. What would you say is your favorite subject and why is that? I would say that right now my favorite subject is biology. I took honors biology freshman, freshman year uh, and then AP biology last year. And so I've really enjoyed both of those classes and I liked being able to see uh, how life was even more complicated than I thought it was because in between my honors class and then my AP biology class I was able to learn more about the subject. Oh, and what do you plan to study in college? I'm planning on double majoring in biology and finance and then move on to either become a pediatric oncologist or the CEO of a hospital or both. Well, that's wonderful. We well, wish you the best of luck with that. But Marguerite, I understand that while the Student of the Year Award is a oh, very difficult award to get. Believe me, we have a lot of people, a uh, very tough competition, and, and you succeeded in getting that on the 12th grade level. Thank but you. Uh, Mary Brent is also receiving another award, and I'd she, like you to tell us a little bit about is. that. She is, and, and first of all, let me say, we have had numerous students compete for this honor, so we're very proud of Mary Brent to have received it. But we were notified last week that Mary Brent is receiving the uh, LSU Esprit de Femme Award, which is given by the uh, Louisiana uh, National Advisory, uh, Diversity Advisory Board. And normally it is not given to younger people, and so we are very proud of that. But uh, Esprit de Femme means spirit of women. 
and it's given to uh, people who have made exceptional efforts towards the advancement of women in Louisiana, and specifically in, in the areas of contribution through the arts, education, healthcare, business and industry, charity, and civic engagement. And, and I think in many of those ways, Mary Brent does stand out and has done a tremendous amount in her um, short life as it is right now, but I know she will go on to do many more great things. Well, it seems like you are very well deserving of this honor, and, uh, and, and I thank you for that. But Marguerite, I also want to ask you, you know, I was principal at Mary Queen of Peace, so I know a lot about SSA, and it seems like the women that um, have graduated from SSA just come out living their faith, being lifelong Catholics. And can you tell us a little bit about how SSA instills that in all of its all of their students? Well, you know, we have we have women all over the world who are contributing in so many ways. We had a young alum working in Tanzania who was actually Skyping back to our students and talking about the conditions that she was dealing with there. But we are basically a Benedictine school. The Benedictine sisters founded our school in 1903, and we carry with us the four pillars of Benedictine tradition of prayer, work, study, and community. And I can assure you that when our students graduate, long before they graduate, when they are in eighth grade, they learn those four pillars, and they can recite them uh, at a moment's notice, and they become part and parcel of who and what they are. And uh, we're very proud of that and hope that we can help the young women to realize that these are a part of their life, not just part of their time at SSA. And the graduates that I know, uh, I, I can tell that they truly live that. Uh, they truly live what they learn is at, at SSA. And Mary Brent, you're a perfect example. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> we thank you for living your faith, and we congratulate you, and we thank you for being here today. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us tonight on Our Schools, Our Future on WLAE. Thank you.